you have a grown man, unarmed, running around someone else's war zone, taking pictures. Explain that to a child and see if it makes any sense to them. All you gotta do is stay alive, make sure nobody else gets hurt, and make good pictures. That's it. Life becomes extremely simple. Of course, the problem becomes when you return, everything's complex again. There's nothing that's so nerve-wracking and anxiety-provoking than being in war zones. But man, it's exhilarating. In 1984, my father was killed photographing the war in El Salvador. I was suiting up for lacrosse practice and my stepdad came into the locker room. He came in and just told me that John was dead. Totally surreal, you know, like that's impossible. It's your dad, he's a big strong figure, no one can get him. I was 15 at the time and uh, I inherited his cameras. Editor from Newsweek magazine gave me his cameras. You know, here, these are yours now. You know, what are you gonna do with them? I first started working as a photographer in Mexico in 2005. There's a mournfulness that Mexicans really admire. I find that in my own self, that magical combination of joy and, and sadness kind of all mixed up together. You hear that? Yeah. Love Mexico. We fear wolves because we never see them, but we see the remains of their kill. And that's kind of what covering the situation in Mexico had been for me. There was just a general sense of insecurity of not knowing who the guy in the big truck was behind you. That really informed the style of which I photographed because it is not intimate photography, because it's not supposed to be. I wanted to give a sense that you're just kind of observing everything as you drive by it, because that's how people were moving around here. You see this scene just as you're driving by. Conflicts and wars are fought for the old reasons. Man's desire for dominance over other men. Biblical stuff, man. What's really been so destabilizing in Mexico is political corruption and judicial impunity. You can get away with murder here. In the middle of the day, in the middle of downtown, someone would get riddled with bullets. When that becomes your daily reality, you must develop some kind of numbness. You do what you have to do to block it out in the moment, but eventually it catches up with you. I mean, if you don't get killed first. Angry thoughts are my biggest problem, I think. I get really uptight in traffic, man. I start to get like little panic attacks. I'm talking to my therapist about this. She's like, practice mindfulness, you know, some form of active meditation. I like to do archery, just concentrate on my fingers, my hands, my body, just sitting there putting arrows down range. My pictures don't scream, they whisper. You go to any hot spot in the world, there's crews of photographers running around, all in competition, to see who can make the most dramatic picture. I did it for myself. I didn't do it to change the world. I, I realized pretty quickly that the world really doesn't want to be changed. It's going to work on its own time cycle. And, and my pictures are certainly a drop in the bucket to that, a drop in the ocean. People talk about the camera being a shield, kind of protect you from all the tragedy. Unfortunately, it also keeps my own empathy from going outward. And I started to really just not care much about people, and that's not a healthy place to be. You know, I've just come to realize that my death doesn't do anything to me. I don't care, I'm gone. But it's all the other people, the people that love me, and that's just not fair. And that's why it's so selfish. I've got a baby on the way, and I'm gonna be here for that child. What? 
I don't believe that photojournalism is a very important job. My pictures and the pictures of my colleagues, they don't really change anything. So let's not pretend like they do. You want to help people and become a doctor and work in some poor neighborhood where people can't afford health care. That's how you help people. My dad died. My buddy Joao lost both of his legs. My buddy Jim lost his head. Enough is enough. I did it. I did it well. Now it's time to move on. Move on to the next thing. And I feel a hell of a lot better for it. My name is Eros Hoagland, and this is Conflict. <laughs>